Over the age of 50, your taste buds are somewhat to blame. That's right, the clinics of geriatric medicine had published that as we get older, especially over the age of 50, literally the number of our taste buds and the sensitivity of our taste buds change. What does that have to do with a vitamin deficiency or a mineral deficiency? Well, if you look back at how you eat, you might notice that you start eating more processed, what are called hyperpalatable foods as you get older. And if you look at generally, if you, the general consensus is most people over 50 do start eating more processed food. You'd think it would be the opposite because maybe there's more time and things like that, but no, you're actually craving things that are saltier, things that are sweeter, and things that are lacking the nutrients that you need for balance. So what we're gonna cover here are some of the most important vitamins and minerals that people become deficient in after the age of 50. So let's go ahead and break it down. I'm gonna start off with a tip before I get into these deficiencies. Salt your food, okay? I mean, if you're hypertensive, then yes, maybe you, you know, might wanna consider something different, but adding some salt to your food is gonna satisfy that whole palatability thing, and it's gonna make it so you're craving less of the other things. I just wanna give you that as a tip, okay? It probably is going to help you, because you don't realize it, because you're, you're, you're just craving things that have more sweetness or more salt, because you're less sensitive, and by contrast, when you were younger, to get that same dopamine response from food, you need to enhance it more. So anyhow, let's move on. First one that people are deficient in over the age of 50 is an obvious one, but it's very important you pay attention, and that's calcium. Okay, but do not get calcium from a supplement. We will talk about this in just a moment. But first, there's a study that was published in the American Society of Nephrology that took a look at 6,050 patients. Okay, and then they took a look at over 1,400 of them that were supplementing with calcium. Now, all of these subjects were people that had history of kidney stones before. The subjects that supplemented calcium had a significantly increased risk of developing more kidney stones. Okay, so that's one reason to not be utilizing calcium supplements. But let's talk more about what we really are concerned about over the ages of 40 and 50, a little bit more cardiovascular health. So this study was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, took a look at 5,448 subjects, really good sized study. Now, all of these people had a history of cardiovascular disease. And what they did is they looked at this group's diet and they found that those that had a calcium rich diet ended up having less risk of more cardiovascular disease advancement. So calcium in their diet was actually helping them. But on the contrary, they found that those that were taking calcium supplements had an increased risk of developing coronary artery calcium buildup, okay, which can be very bad for cardiovascular disease. So the bottom line is we need calcium, but not in these crazy concentrated amounts. A lot of it has to do with what we absorb, which we'll talk about in a minute with vitamin D and things like that. But what I would recommend is eating things like hard aged cheeses. Okay, you don't need to like eat the low quality mozzarella like like knockoff stuff, right? You can go and actually eat like Parmesan and Pecorino Romano, which have vitamin K along with it to help the calcium go to the right spot. Also eating sardines, eating anchovies that have the little teeny bones in them. That is one of the best ways to get calcium. Also just some simple leafy greens. So be getting your calcium in that way. Now this next one is one that isn't talked about as much. It's less about a vitamin mineral deficiency, but more about how our energy manufacturing in the body declines as we get older. Okay, so this has to do with what is called NAD. I'm gonna keep this very simple, but NAD is an electron carrier. It binds to an electron and it allows that electron to get into what is called our mitochondria to create energy. As we get older, we have a natural age-related decline in this NAD. So we have less NAD able to transport energy, transport electrons, but we also have less NAD available to activate other things. So NAD has two jobs, or has multiple jobs. Its primary job is carrying energy from the food that you eat into the cell to be manufactured into energy. But when it's not doing that, it has a part-time job doing other things. It has to always be doing something. And as we get older, since we have less NAD available, there's less NAD available to do other things when it's not transporting nutrients, or transporting electrons, rather. Okay, so one of the most important things that NAD can do is NAD activates what are called sirtuins. Sirtuins are genes that get expressed that have all kinds of downstream functions when it comes down to uh, potential longevity and just helping us feel a little bit more youthful and maybe just you know feel like ourselves again, right? It's a very important piece of the puzzle. Now, it's not necessarily 
a vitamin or a mineral that we become deficient in, but it is something that there is definitely an age-related decline with. And I feel like when it comes down to feeling just energized and feeling like ourselves, it's a pretty important thing. Now, the sponsor of today's video is a company called Verso, which creates a product uh, that is called NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Okay, now I am a huge fan of NMN because it converts and helps create NAD within the body, helps support NAD production. So when it comes down to feeling a little bit more energized, potentially NMN could be one of the better things that you could take. There's a lot of research in the world of this. Dr. David Sinclair has done a lot of research in this. He's a Harvard professor that specializes in this world. So I highly recommend that you check them out if you're really just trying to, I don't know, do something that's good for your mitochondria, do something that's good for your overall uh, potential longevity. I put a 20% off link down below for Verso NMN. Now, they're really unique, okay? They store everything in cold storage and then they ship it ultra fast and then when you get it, you you want to put it in the fridge, okay? That's just one of the best things that you can do to make sure that it maintains its integrity. And then they bind it with resveratrol, which helps activate it a little bit more as well. It's a very unique product. So anyway, that link is down below in the description. It's called Verso. And if you use code THOMAS, you save 20% off. So that link is down below. The next one that I want to talk about plays a role with everything I've talked about so far, and that's vitamin D. Okay, if people think that vitamin D just has to do with the sun and doesn't do much else. Okay, well, as we get older, we don't synthesize as much vitamin D from the sun. Okay, that's a very important thing to note. Plus, we spend more time indoors. So vitamin D, yes, it helps calcium go to the right place. That's very important. Okay, but it also has a lot of other functions. Vitamin D is a hormone. Okay, so vitamin D regulates a lot of different things ranging from fatty acid oxidation to glucose metabolism and uh, you know, glucose tolerance, uh, all the way down to just fat loss in general. There's a very big piece there. And over 50, we become very deficient in it. The other issue that we face is as we gain weight when we get older, which happens, we gain more fat, vitamin D becomes sequestered in our fat. Okay, what that means is if you take a look at someone that has a lot of fat on them, their vitamin D levels are generally lower. But then if you look at the studies, as they start to lose weight, vitamin D becomes liberated. They have more vitamin D floating around because it gets locked up in the fat cells. Now, you can take vitamin D supplementation, but I generally recommend getting it in a bioavailable form, okay, getting it in a form that is coming from food whenever possible. One of the better ways to get it is going to be from eggs that are from pasture-raised hens. When hens spend time outside, you can have a three to five X increase in the vitamin D content of the eggs. Huge difference between buying the cheap eggs and buying the ones that are pasture raised. So eat a few of those eggs. Okay, you have to look at how vitamin D plays a role in the metabolism outside of just some saturated fat in there that you may be concerned about. Okay, we're not talking a copious amount, a couple eggs every other day or so could play a very big role. The next one I want to talk about is zinc. Now, zinc gets thrown under the bus a lot, but it is a very important mineral, okay? And when you look at people that are getting over the age of 40, 50, zinc levels do tend to be a little bit lower. Well, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published an interesting paper that demonstrated that zinc could be partially to blame for the age-related decline in the immune system. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So this study took a look at people that received either 30 milligrams of zinc or a placebo. Now, there were 31 people in this study and they studied them for three months. And at the end of the three months, they found that those that took in the zinc had a significant increase in T cells and T cell function. So T cells are a big part of the immune system. What they were looking at in this particular case were subtypes of CD4 and what are called CD8. Okay, these two subtypes, CD4 sort of orchestrates the immune system to do its thing, kind of organizes thing. And then CD8 is more like the natural killer, the killer T cells that go in and actually fight pathogens. So yes, we see a big link between that and the immune system, but it's really difficult to talk about the immune system these days without saying something wrong, so let's not go there too far. We know that you know this study was very interesting, right? But one of the other things that people don't talk about is how important zinc is when it comes down to the building of retinol binding proteins. Now, what is that? Retinol binding proteins carry vitamin A throughout the body, but mainly like to support our eyes and eyesight and everything like that, okay? I do not recommend that you go out and supplement vitamin A. It's you can overdose on vitamin A, and you should be getting it from your diet. But more importantly, you need the retinol binding protein to be able to carry the vitamin A. So zinc is so important for that retinol binding protein. If you have a vitamin A issue, more than likely zinc could be helping to like carry it where it needs to go. So if you're concerned with eyesight, that is a very common deficiency that you'll see. 
Then we need to talk about iron, but huge caution with iron. Okay, only about 10% of people, only, that's actually a good amount, are actually anemic, right? But if you talk to people, a lot of people think that they are. And I don't wanna say that just to like say, you know, invalidate what you're saying or what you feel, but we have to look at the big picture here. Iron is a very important thing. Okay, hemoglobin carries oxygen to all of our you know, cells, right? Hemoglobin carries it so that we can have function and breathe and your know, cells can breathe. Okay, well, without that, it would be a problem. Well, on a hemoglobin, there are four iron molecules and these iron molecules carry the oxygen. So if we're deficient in iron, we're carrying less oxygen. So it's definitely a problem, but it's something that you absolutely need to get tested and you need to get tested consistently because numbers can change. I do not recommend taking an iron supplement unless you are absolutely positive that you are deficient. Okay. Here's what happens, iron oxidizes easily. And if you take in iron and you don't need it, excess iron will oxidize your DNA. Okay, that can play a big role in how genes are expressed and what happens there at a genetic level. So do not just willy nilly take an iron supplement. What I would recommend more so that you do is get vitamin C in from your diet through you know, good leafy greens, some fruits and veggies, a vitamin C you know, uh, supplement if you want to. Okay, the thing with vitamin C is it's going to help iron absorption. Iron doesn't absorb really well, it's a heavy, you know, molecule, right? So it needs a little help getting absorbed. And vitamin C could be the bigger role there, could be the bigger piece of that puzzle to help absorb that. So that would be more so my recommendation than just running out and buying an iron supplement unless you actually have like legit proof that you have an iron issue. Okay, when you look at the world of iron, there's a very delicate balance with magnesium, with copper, with zinc, and all of this. So if iron is low, there are a lot of times there are other issues at play, inflammatory things. So if your iron levels are low, I would recommend that you test some other things like your C-reactive protein, various interleukins, look at inflammatory markers within your body and have your doc check that out. Then a really big one, vitamin B12, B6, and B9. Why are we so deficient in that? I don't know. It might have to do with maybe less consumption of animal products as we get older, because these are typically the B vitamins that you see deficiencies in in like vegan people or vegetarians that aren't eating a lot of animal products. So what's going on here? 20% of people over the age of 60 are deficient in vitamin B12. Okay, B12 is, yes, critical for red blood cell formation, but it does more than that. A deficiency in vitamin B12 leads to elevated homocysteine levels, which can damage the arterial lining. Okay, that's not good for cardiovascular disease, that's not good for performance, for oxygen delivery, not good for any of that stuff. Okay, so what I would recommend with vitamin B12, uh, either animal product, because animal product is gonna be rich in all the B vitamins, or nutritional yeast, start adding that to things. Okay, add it to broccoli, add it to bro whatever, just add it, it tastes good, it's cheesy, and it's got a lot of vitamin B12 in it, which is going to be good for supporting that stuff. So vitamin B, the issue is, especially as you hydrate or if you're doing keto or low carb, you lose a lot of that water and your water soluble vitamins, like B vitamins, go right out along with them. Okay, that's why after you take a B vitamin, a lot of times your urine's bright yellow. It's because B vitamins flush out very fast and you have to consistently be bringing them in. It's not like you can sit down and say, I'm gonna eat a bunch of meat today and get my vitamin B in and then not touch it for a week. You need to consistently get in those numbers in. So I recommend kind of weaving it into your diet the best way that you can. So as always, I hope this video helped and I will see you tomorrow.